Hello everyone. Today I want to show you how I take some cuttings to propagate uh, some new plants for next year. Um, um, if you, this is the Royal Velvet which we've gotten, we cut a lot of this like two weeks ago and, and I can't believe how much there is. I don't know that we'll have time to cut it but uh, the bees love it so we might just leave it for the bees if we don't have time to cut it so um, either way it's good. So cutting into the green part is what we ask when you come out to pick your lavender. Um, you don't want to cut down in the woody part, the bark part of the plant, um, because it stresses the plant. And most of these would probably be okay to do that in the spring, um, but since it's October, they won't have so much warm weather, um, warm weather time to recover before winter, so um, we definitely want to take uh, at this time of year. This is a pretty established plant and it, it looks pretty healthy so I'm just going to go through and take a, a few cuttings um, from this plant. If your plant looks like it's, um, if the leaves are yellow or brown or like that one's got a spittle bug on it so I'm just going to skip that one. And it probably would, wouldn't be any different but I want to give myself the best chance possible because <laughs> it is hard enough getting these things going <laughs> with a healthy branch. You don't want to pick the ones that are budding because they are really putting all their energy into the bloom and the flower so we'll skip that one. Um, so I've got a few here. Hopefully the camera will focus. Take about an inch of the bottom leaves off, scrape down one side, pop it in the soil. Another. You will definitely have a green thumb by the end of this. <laughs> Once you kind of get going, it, it doesn't take too long to do this part. I think the hardest part is looking and trying to find nice um, straight stems that are healthy and I think I'm gonna try to find a little stick or something because some of mine are bending when I'm putting them in there. I just moistened my soil just now so if I let it sit a while a few hours before it probably would be fine. I wouldn't need a stick. So I just found a, a dried up piece of lavender and I'm just gonna poke some holes here. And when I first put them in, I bring my, my mister. Um, Kifa got this for me maybe a year ago. Um, you can get them on Amazon. I don't even know what kind it is. It's been so nice. I was just using an old spray bottle, but my hands would hurt. So you just missed it a little bit. It's got battery, or it's chargeable. It just plugs in. Um, but that charge lasts a long time. And when the plants or the cuttings don't have roots yet, it's very hard for them to take up water. So um, you should miss them once or twice a day. Um, just to help them take up some moisture and ideally they should root in about three or four weeks. I've had here's some spittle bug again. So that one's got a bud. We don't want that one. That one's got a bud. They say the ones uh, toward the bottom of the plant might be better. So that one I would skip that one because the, the branch is kind of kinked. I don't know why that is, but I just think that I will skip it. So here is a good one. Let's see. And it's got some good strong green growth. It's a pretty old stem, so that's good. It's not floppy. It's, it's kind of hard. 
So even the green part's kind of hard, so I like that. So I'm gonna cut that one left-handed while I hold my phone. And I don't wanna cut down into the woody part. Staying up in the green. Here we go. So I've got two rows of this royal velvet now. I cut a whole tray of royal velvet last week, so I have plenty of those. We just really want to take cuttings this year to fill in um, the rest of our plots, maybe the ones that didn't make it. Uh, you always expect with lavender in Kentucky that you will have some die every winter um, or some die just from all the rain and humidity. Um, Lavender is a Mediterranean a plant native to the Mediterranean area, so it likes um, hot, dry weather. Um, we have the hot, we don't have the dry, so <laughs> um, we would we just would expect to replant some of these every year. Okay, so I'm moving on to cut a few Folgate. Um, I love this color of Folgate. Um, overall, the Royal Velvet's my favorite because you can do so much with it, but this, this iridescent purple, it just looks like it glows, um, and that purple is my favorite color purple. <laughs> um, so we have a few of these blooming too. Um, I think we have just a handful, four or five holes that we need to fill um, in this group, so um, I'll cut some of those, then I'll move on to the Melissa. This Folgate we planted last year and it has really grown. And it's kind of fun to see the new growth. If you can tell, the, when it starts to become kind of gray green, that's the older growth. But the new growth is bright green. So this is pretty new. I think either they got too much rain or maybe it was just too hot and humid for them. You remember at one point a few weeks ago, it was like, or Back in August, it was like 95 or insane temperatures. Um, and really, since then, um, since it's cooled off, they've kind of perked back up a little bit, so. Lavender likes 80 degree sunny weather, low humidity. Just like most of the rest of us. Even after I cut this one, the grasshopper wants to stick around. Or is it a cricket? Is there a difference? Somebody tell me. I don't know. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. You see a lot of praying mantis out here, too. They're really awesome. I love seeing them. They'll just watch. They'll watch you. I don't get as much done out here as I would like because I'm talking to the critters. <laughs> so, don't tell my husband. Um, I've seen groundhog out here. I've seen deer, bunnies, birds, crickets, spiders, bees, <laughs> and helicopters.